today's episode. Let's get the motors hooked up now. We also don't need this ultrasonic sensor since we're going to rely solely on the camera for navigation. Okay, we're going to test out the example code for the motor driver hat. Okay, that's not enough power. Throw in the pot. Hmm. Let's try out having two sets of batteries, one for the pie and then another for the motors. Let's see if it moves. Huh. Not doing anything. Okay, let's try three batteries instead of separate batteries. That way, at least even once the motors draw the voltage down, it'll theoretically stay above the voltage needed for the five volt regulator. Well, that's a little bit of progress, but I don't know why it's doing this pulsing stuff. It's really weird. I think I'm sick of trying to use this motor controller. Let's stick with what we know. Arduino! And an Arduino motor controller. Let's just keep it simple, you know? We'll just run serial commands from the Pi to the Arduino to tell it how to control the motors. We already know an Arduino Nano with this motor controller works on these little standard motors that are in everything. And it's the same setup we've used in our other robots, just not with a Pi. So, this should work. This should work. It's doing nothing. Man, I don't know. It's, it's receiving the serial commands from the computer. Let's connect this motor controller to this robot instead just to see if we can get some movement just to make sure that there's not just something messed up with everything on this robot let's see if this works nothing what the hell i don't get it hmm am i going crazy what the hell is going on okay Let's let's hook an Arduino up to this robot. I know this robot works. So let's Let's get this one hooked up again and make sure I'm just not going totally crazy Okay Yeah Um, That works perfectly fine. We even have the claw on this robot and we could mount the camera to that This robots already working. So let's just let's just put the pie and the camera and the speaker on this robot. I'm sorry if y'all really wanted me to use this one, but it's just, it's not working out. I don't know what's going on with it, but we're just, we're not gonna waste time with that anymore when we already have a working robot right here that we can make smart. Another thing too is this robot already has Bluetooth right here. So literally all we have to do is mount the Raspberry Pi and give it power. We don't actually have to make any physical connection to the Arduino or the motors from the Pi because we can just all do that through Bluetooth. Well, here we go. This should work. <laughs> I actually know this will work. I know for a fact that this will work. I would put a billion dollars on this working. Ah. Oh my God. It worked. It worked. We have movement now, so let's get started on navigation. We got the object recognition working on the last episode, but let's get a little bit more extreme with it. Let's let it see the edges of stuff. That way it knows where the floor ends. We're gonna use this grid system. We're gonna start on the bottom and go up on each column and find how many cells high it can go before we detect an edge. And that'll basically be how much floor we have in that column. And we're actually gonna use decimals on those numbers and get a precise height for each column. Sometimes it won't actually be able to detect an edge on a column. We're going to count those columns as zero, as if there's an edge right at the beginning of the column. That way the robot won't even try to move that way. So one thing that definitely needs to be figured out is, you know, edges like this. I have the robot sitting on a table right now. And since this right here is technically the tallest column where an edge starts, all the rest have edge way further down the code i have right now wants it to turn right and that would probably not be good because that's off the table 
So we need to figure out how to, I guess, create this boundary of the table right here. Could do something with like the, since like the brightness of the table is way different from the brightness of not table. And we could use the center bottom cell as like the baseline color. That worked perfectly. Now, not table is not counted as an area that you can go. And see, it doesn't even, it doesn't even want to go to the, the corner right here because it's too different. There's too much color change right here compared to the center square. Let's run a edge detection navigation test. Things hard to follow. So this is object avoidance using only the camera. It's working pretty good. <laughs> well, that's really awesome. <laughs> On the next episode, we're going to combine this navigation with detecting humans and following them. We are also going to integrate the speech code with the movement code and get everything working seamlessly together.